And here is the playing hall for Millionaire Chess. One million dollars guaranteed total prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. It's a nice playing hall. It's a seven round tournament. I was lucky enough to participate in it. You're going to see some of my games here. All seven of them. And at the end of the seventh, after the seventh game, I will do a little, I call critique of the tournament. Both good things and things I think that need some improvement. But anyway, it was a great playing hall. It was a great site and fabulous and exciting Las Vegas. Had a great time. Hope you enjoy the games. And here are some pictures from my trip to Las Vegas for Millionaire Chess. There's the Bellagio, Caesars Palace, the Mirage. Million dollars guaranteed prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. Just want to show you some pictures uh, from off of Las Vegas Boulevard. Beautiful hotels, beautiful buildings, uh, cabs everywhere. It's like New York. You can get around anywhere you want to. There's a Caesars Palace on the right. Just wonderful. Another picture of Caesars Palace. See a little reflection there. It's up on a bridge with glass behind it. Reflected a little bit off the glass. Bailey's down Las Vegas Boulevard again. Place is running 24-7. The economy is booming. I'll tell you, this is the epitome of capitalism, folks. I thought it was a great place. I wish I could spend more time there. Um, probably a little too hot in the summer, but... And there's Donnie Marie, voted number one performers in Vegas. Very a personal friend of mine, very close, and she loves those guys, so I got that picture for her. There's Blasio again, and we go down to... There's the gondolas, those boat rides, and the beautiful buildings, beautifully landscaped. I mean, it's... I'll tell you, I know the economy's tough in the United States, but if you can't find a job here, you can't find a job anywhere. Encore again. Uh, building off a view off a bridge. A lot of traffic, but it's very uh, pedestrian friendly. They stop all the cars for the big intersections for the people to get through. And there's a waterfall there outside of a hotel. And there's me. Uh, smiling away. <clears throat> Excuse me. A nice, bright, sunny day. In Las Vegas. I call that the needle. I guess you can go up on top of that. Another picture of the Wynn Hotel. Steve Wynn, the big entrepreneur in Vegas. Trump Hotel in Neiman Marcus right next to it there. The Mirage with the uh, Beatles show. And you see Caesar's Palace in the background. And poor Mario there. I cut his head off. There he is. There's Mario. There's people dressed up all over the place. Pirates, showgirls, you name it. The only thing I didn't see was Darth Vader. And there's the Eiffel Tower restaurant. Pretty cool place. And Britney Spears' Peace to Me show. Now, I'm not a big Britney Spears fan, but I went to the show, and it was really, really good. I'm glad I went. It isn't just a concert. It's an actual show. And she did very well, and so did everybody else that was in it. And there's a picture of the airport, me leaving Las Vegas. So there it is, a little picture tour of Las Vegas from when I was at Millionaire Chess in October 2014. Just when I had on the end of the video, uh, when I left the airport, I took some pictures as I was leaving Las Vegas. And you see outer Las Vegas there, all the new homes, all the new development. I mean, places booming. Uh, entertainment industry and gambling fuels a lot of money. So money brings people, and people brings economy. And look at this place. It's just amazing stuff. As we're passing over Las Vegas, we head into the mountains. Around the far end of the Grand Canyon, unfortunately, I was on the wrong side of the plane to get any pictures of the Grand Canyon, but this is the end of the Grand Canyon. Pretty beautiful stuff. Desolate, you know, it's funny how a desolate area can look beautiful. And some more there, some more pictures, more pictures there of the landscape. You see the curve of the picture of the airplane there on the right. As we get higher in the mountains, and higher in the mountains still, as we get towards the central United States. And those are the pictures, or the rest of them, from my Las Vegas trip at Millionaire Chess. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Round two of a tournament I played in Las Vegas, Nevada in October of 2014. I flew across the country to get there, so it was a big deal to me. And I'm pretty shaken from the how poorly I played in round one. Just trying to 
get back on track. I'm white, my opponent is black, he plays c5. I probably should have played d5, but instead I played f3. If I played d5, knight to f6, knight c3, g6, and I'll tell you, that's a lot better than what I had. Knight to f3, c takes. Now, we're on move three for me now. And this is where I completely lose my mind. Now, sometimes when you're thinking, okay, I was thinking to myself what I'm going to do is I'm going to play knight takes, and eventually I'm going to try e4. That was my thinking. Knight takes e4, and I played e4. As soon as I did it, I realized, oh, my God, what am I doing? I should have played knight takes. I was thinking about my next move is e4, whenever I can get e4 in. And, of course, he just takes it. Now, here we are on move four, and I'm down a pawn already. I should have probably taken it with a queen, because after knight takes, queen a4. It kind of gets like a weird setup, like a Scandinavian, but with white. Anyway, after e4, bishop takes, knight c6. Now, I have to sit here now. I mean, I'm on move five, and I'm already mentally shot. I played poorly in the first game. I said, okay, all right, get your crap together. You've got wide open, wide open lines for your bishops. You've got two pieces. You're two pieces ahead in development. Let's see what you can do something with it. Just get your pieces out there and cause them some grief. Bishop c4. He went e6, which I was really surprised. And the computer, that's the second choice. E6, I castle, knight F6. Now, even being a pawn down, I'm only down about three quarters of a pawn in score. So, I got a little development on him. Knight to C3, get your pieces developed. A6. Now, computer calls for bishop to B3 to back it up. He's going to come after it. I just played A3. Not the greatest move in the world, but... After b3, b5, I think would have been better for me. After a3, bishop b7, rook d1, castles. Now it gives me a question mark here. And I think he could have got my knight. You're going to see in a minute what I did. My thoughts were knight here, the knight infiltrates here with the bishop guarding it. Knight to a4, and the game is already lost for me. He goes b5, I go knight to b6. Now, amazingly enough, amazingly enough, he doesn't take the bishop on c4. He thought, I could get the knight out, I want rook, he wanted rook b8. Now... If he had taken, knight takes, knight d5, queen takes, pawn takes. As you can see, the queen is trapped. If I go here, queen moves, queen here. Now who's going to see that? He didn't, of course. Rook to b8, I took the bishop. Which is probably the best move, of course. Get my piece back. He played rook, rook takes. I don't know. Take the bishop on c4, maybe. And then you can go d5. Really don't know. He played rook takes. I played bishop a2. Now I'm down a pawn, but I'm already down a pawn and a half in score. And it's like, my God, my God, what is happening to my brain? Knight to g4 goes after the bishop. I want to keep the dark squared bishop, but there's nowhere to put it. So I put it back on c1. Back on bishop d4. Knight takes, knight takes, knight f6. Might have been a little better for me. I decided to go bishop c1. Now, I think part of my problem in the first round, and this is the second round, I played two rounds a day. Uh, we played seven rounds total, two rounds for three days, and then the fourth day is a single round. 
I always bring cameras and videos to take pictures and tape some of the good players, world-class players that were there in a lot of tournaments and just get a feel for the tournament, and they barred all cameras. Now, I can understand cell phones. Now, security was extremely tight for a chess tournament. A lot of metal detectors. You know, I'll go along with that. No cell phones, no. But a digital camera, a little small one, no. I was, I was so upset over that. And I think that threw me off my game a little, but that's my own fault. After bishop to c1, bishop c5, rook f1, what else am I going to do? Queen to b6, queen to e2. Now, you know, my position was really horrible. Queen to c7, he goes back. I went h3, and it gave me a double question mark. Double question mark. It says knight to d4 wins for black. You can go through the analysis. It doesn't really say on the computer here. But he goes knight on g to e5. Knight to d4 would have led to... I mean, what else could I have done? It says pawn takes, but I'm doomed. It's it's over. It's over because after this knight takes, pawn takes, he mates. He missed it. He moved the wrong knight. Again, I dodge a bullet. I lost in the opening. He just missed mate. So I go c3 just to stop that. I didn't see the mate, but I knew that knight was disaster there for me. Knight takes, queen takes, knight to e5, queen to g3. I think I'm back in the game. It's still extremely unpleasant. Bishop d6. Rook to d1, and I was really happy about that because that's a computer move instead of developing my bishop off to c1 again knight to c4 i'm slowly creeping back here he's played some inaccurate moves i think his position is good enough from his play but for my poor play and that's not a shot against my opponent queen to d3 double attack on the bishop he checks h1 f1 it likes f1 a little bit better for the king i want h1 and he just he doesn't move the bishop out he makes this huge mistake he goes knight to e5 he's probably figuring maybe he can go later here i don't know what he's thinking and of course i play queen to e3 bishop can't escape he goes f5. And I go f4. Now the bishop is doomed. Of course, if I had taken knight to f3 check, king to h1, and then queen mates. After f4, I'm looking at myself, oh my god, my god. I'm back in the game. I'm going to win a piece. For two pawns. And of course he takes the pawn. He has no choice. I play queen takes. And he makes another error. According to the computer. Question mark. He plays d5. Rook to f7. And a4 was his suggestion. But after d5. What's the move? What's the move folks? Rook d1. I backed up the queen. Now, I'm not completely dense here. Part of my thought process was, if that queen ever moves, I go bishop here. I'm just so happy to be back in the game at this point. I got a piece for two pawns. But unfortunately, rook to, rook to e1 ends the game for him, my opponent. And after knight, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes c6. It's over. All those pawns are going to fall on the queen side. And I missed that. 
Well, let's see if we can follow this now. I ruined a game right at the very beginning. He gives it back. I'm ahead. I give it back. He's ahead. And then he gives it back to me. Knight to G6. I'm two points, two over two points ahead now in score. I exchange, of course, being a, a piece for two pawns. I want the queens off the board. Rook to D4. It's one of the selections. A4 is a choice. Maybe I should have done that. I decided to go Rook to D4. He can't push the E pawn because the D pawn will be taken. I'm gonna so I'm gonna bring up my bishop and I'm gonna double up my rook, so I'm gonna be okay. I could even go here with the bishop if I want to later. This bishop's bearing right down. I think I'm okay. He plays f4. Now the computer suggests that I bring the king over and go a4 again. It wants me to go a4 very much. And I can see why. A4, he can't pu he can't push. He has to take. And I move the bishop off or move the bishop to here. He can't protect that pawn. And I got all kinds of counterplay. Makes perfect sense. I decided to go bishop to b1. Not the end of the world. Rook over. I took the knight off. Pawn. Bishop d2, get my bishop out finally, even though he was moved out once, I put him back. F3. What to do, what to do. One of my favorite lines. Makes perfect sense. I should have moved the bishop here. Guards this square. If he takes, I just take back. Or if he should take that back, I should just go here. It's not the end of the world. I'll have to give him more analysis. Maybe that's not quite it, but after F3. Computer likes rook to F5 for him. And then king to G1 for me. After F3. I just wanted G3, and I'm thinking, okay. He can go there all he wants to. I'll just go king here, and I'm fine. I can always go here later to cut that off if I get desperate. With a pawn here and a bishop here, I'm fine. Rook to d7. Bishop f4. Now, here's where I really screw up. He goes g5. I don't take the pawn. I go bishop b5, figured out this block is advancing pawns, and I'll be fine. There's no way he can queen. But right now the computer shows 0 0.00. Computer wanted me to go bishop takes. Then after e5, rook to h4, and it's over for him. It's over for him. After bishop e5, he plays rook there. Now my, now my bishop is stuck. Bishop to b8 is the only move I had. And it shows 0.00, .00 on the computer. And he plays e5. And it's got a huge question mark. Rook to f8. Go after the bishop. And after bishop b5, rook f5, and that's a draw. After e5, I go g4, hitting the rook, pawn takes, pawn takes, d takes, b takes, rook f7. And then bishop b5, and the bishop survives. I'm thinking, I back from I, my bishop for two pawns. This is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. That rook is going to raise hell. He's going to lose. He's going to lose this pawn for certain. And then eventually this pawn, and this pawn will go next. Rook takes f7. Bishop, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> king over. Rook to f1, go right after the pawn. King h6, big question mark. 
Computer likes very much Rook F4. Now, he's three pieces for a pawn, but after King to G1 and G4, H takes. I mean, it's still a game for me. King to H2. G6. King G3. King H5. I'm thinking, oh, man, he's getting his king in a bind there. Rook takes. Rook takes, king takes. Now, not only I have a bishop for two pawns, but his are doubled. What's he going to do? All kinds of zoom zwang positions going on here. He moves the king up. And this is why I should have played bishop f6, but I didn't. I should have played bishop f6. I went king to g2. If I had gone here instead... After king takes, bishop takes, and it's over. It's over. This bishop will hold this pawn in check. I'll just move him around. He can't queen. Meanwhile, the king comes over, picks up everything else. King to g2 like a dummy. g4, and this is where I blow it again. I should have played H takes, King takes. It's pretty much the same scenario. My king can go over the queen side. I'm good to go. I play bishop here. Now he goes G5. And the game is basically even. H takes, King takes. King F2. King F4. It's basically a draw. I think I, he has to play it exactly right. And this is where I lose it again. Completely lose my mind. I played bishop takes g5. Now, I had calculated it out, and I thought I could make it. I sat there for quite a while and counted it and counted it and counted. Well, guess what? I didn't have enough to win. King takes, king F, king goes to F5, king, 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 don't have much choice, king, we go through the scenario here, all the pawns get grabbed, we both go on a pawn run, check, king, check, king, and this is where we drill, I don't even know how to describe my mental process at the time. I was so distraught. I was so upset. I came a long ways. I wanted to play my best. This wasn't even close. Anyway, folks, so round two, I've got a half a point. We'll see how the other five games go. And as I say, when I say my, what I always say at the end of my videos, if you think chess is